It is bloody cold in the capital this morning. Okay, boys and girls. So, I'm back here at this bathroom, which you saw me do. Um, I was I did a video of this a couple of weeks back, um, and what we've got. Let me. You don't need to see my ugly mug for this bit. Um, so I've taken all the switches off. I've basically pulled all the wires out, and I've just I've put some grommets back in again. I've rearranged them a little bit just to make a bit more sense of what was already here. So what I'm going to do. There were up here two fan isolators, and for reasons I have no idea why, they moved them down here. Now, I, I, have, I absolutely don't understand why, it makes no sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm reinstating those back up there again, where they traditionally would be. So there's gonna be a blank plate here, which kind of works actually, because otherwise this was the reason they had to put all of these millions of connector blocks in this area, as you remember. So I can, I can neatly terminate all of these together, pop a blank plate on top of that, and then the new dimmer switch can go in here, and it just hopefully will be a lot freer. There'll be a lot more room after I've finished. Um, but yeah, I've just put the grommets in, back in the boxes because there wasn't a single grommet in sight here, and I've just taken all of the wires out here, and just I've just sort of rejigged it all so it makes a little bit more sense now. So that's where we're at. So give me five minutes, let me re well, give me, Give me a little bit of time, an hour, two hours, whatever it's going to take me. Let me rejig all of this and get the switches back on and stuff, and we will reconvene in a little while. So, I've done a bit of rectification work, and I've taken all the old switches off. Um, this is one I've actually just put back on. So we've made a few changes now, because if you remember last time, we had all of, the, all of the wiring was all in this cavity here, and there were lots and lots of connector blocks in here. Now... I don't know that I'm not 100% sure the reason why they've done that. I don't know. So I've just basically ripped it all out and started again. Uh, and what we've got now is up here we had the two isolator for the bathroom fans. I have no idea why. So I've relocated them back up there where they where they traditionally would be. So all I've done is this is now the wiring going up to the extractor. So we've just got our earth block, which I'm just running a fly lead off to the bat box. Um, I don't know if you can see we've now got some grommets back in there like we should have should have had in the first place permanent live, switch live, and then neutral at the very top. So, and that'll just put, I'll just put a blank plate on that now. I've got a stain, one of these stainless blank plates, which I'll pop on. So I've reinstated this. This was for the down lights in the bathroom. So the left side does left side, right side does the right lights, obviously. Um, and again, I've just got the neutral and the maintenance free connector back there. Fly deep to the back box, grommets again. But it just means that by doing it this way, we haven't got any wiring out here anymore. Now this here was for the, uh, there's some lights in the, under the shelving in the bathroom, which I've got a feeling I'm gonna have to disconnect because um, there's a fault. This is actually the neutral for the under cabinet lights in the bathroom and there's a neutral to earth fault on it. Uh, let me, in fact, I'll just get my me test meter and show you, two seconds. Okay, I'm sorry if the camera works not very good here, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold the camera rig and hold the test meter as well. So all I've done is just put the put one probe on the neutral conductor which goes out into the bathroom and then one on the back box which is earthed. And we currently have a dead short. Now it doesn't actually make any difference if I drop it down to 250. It's the fault is still there. So the rest of the installation is actually okay. This is the main neutral which serves the dimmers and the extract fans up there. Um, which is abs that's absolutely fine. So that's perfectly acceptable. But um, that neutral for those little little fairy lights under the um, cabinets, I'll show you in a second actually. But there's something amiss there. So now down here in the corner is the um, fuse spurs. Now this fuse spur here did do the tower rail in the bathroom, which is now gone. So that I've reinstated that, and that's now going to do the lighting in the bathroom because the lights were fed from this cluster fuck here. This flex here, I don't know what that is. I've got to try and figure out what that's for. There's a disconnected cable there. I don't know what that's for. Pass, I have no idea. It's a bit of a mess, to be honest. So I've got to try and neaten all that up and get it in some sort of fashion of sorts. This here was particularly interesting, though, because um, 
we've got a twin and earth coming in and a twin and earth going out but we've got blue sleeving on the cpc which i'm not not entirely sure why <laughs> so yeah i'm not sure what was going on there but i think I'm, this is actually the controller for the um for the underfloor heating in the bathroom which i'm going to leave disconnected i'm not going to re-energize that okay everybody i'm just going to do a quick voiceover because my microphone at this point decided to start playing silly buggers <laughs> But essentially what we had was, this is now finished, and the main thing I'd done is to move these two fan isolator switches here. I've moved them up to the top of the door frame where you would, you would traditionally have them. But by doing this, what it's done is it's given us the ability that we've now got somewhere which we can terminate all the cabling which we had. If you remember, we had all the cabling between the, all the connections were mounted in between the edges of the boxes and the timber frame. So by moving the fan isolators, it's now given us somewhere which we can safely terminate all of those connections and they're out of harm's way. But with the main thing is we've lost all of the connectors that were stuffed in here. So we've lost all them and then we've just got the two light, the two dimmer switches. I'm using these ones A because they're IP rated, so they're perfect for use in bathrooms, but also um, they're just, we've got a very, very small head height in the ceiling. We've only got about 80 mil of uh, headroom in this ceiling. We haven't got much at all, so these are perfect because they're a very flush little fitting. Um, these aren't fire rated, but again, it doesn't matter in here because um, there's no living, living accommodation above because this is a flat roof um, and we've got a concrete ceiling above us anyway. So, and these are the junction boxes I'm using. These are fantastic little things. These are really, really good. Um, these are from a company called D-Box. I don't know if you can make that out. I think you should be able to. Um, and they're just a maintenance free box and they're really good. Every, there's no screw fittings at all. But the main reason I like them is because you've got the fourth terminal here. A lot of, um, a lot of boxes don't have the extra terminal. Um, now the reason I've put, I've actually, you'll notice I've done this in three core and earth and we've got a spare core. Now the reason behind that is just because whoever wired this originally a couple of years back or when it, whenever it was, from the light switch, the first light on the circuit, they took a three core and earth. So, to me, it made sense for the sake of put running a bit more three core in. If they want to split the lights and have two lights there, two lights here, you've got the extra core to accommodate it. So, so I'm going to snap that back, pop it up in the ceiling, um, and that's basically it. I'm actually going to do a review on these boxes. I'm going to do a maintenance-free junction box review shortly, so that will be coming up, but you'll have to hang fire for that. I actually had, uh, I had one or two people, only one or two, um, and they were saying... Um, about the, the cost of what I was charging to do this job because I said I was going to charge two days labour plus my parking and materials and all that. Um, and people were like, oh my God, yeah, that's horrendous. You shouldn't be charging that. Well, I'm not being funny. You know, this has taken me, you know, this has taken me a, a full day just to do this bit plus the, I think the three call outs I've had to do previously to this job. I think that's very fair, you know. I think the problem a lot of tradesmen have is we have to, you know, we've got this thing, we've got to price things as cheaply as possible. And, the, you know, the bottom line is you don't have to, you know, you do a job based on what you think the job is worth. And I think that's a mistake that, you know, we've all been guilty of making it, but, you know, when I price a job, I price it for what I think, you know, is a nice, comfortable figure. Um, and the other thing that's worth noting, you have to provide a six-year guarantee on all your work that you do. That's, six years is a very long time for nothing to go wrong. You know, that is a long time when you think the average, this is a rented accommodation, so they're not going to treat this respectfully. You know, to do a job for, you know, one day's labour, to guarantee it for six years for a day's labour, that just does, the math just doesn't work there. Anyway, I'm all done here, so I'm going to load up the van quickly and we'll reconvene in a second. Now, someone left a comment the other day, which I thought was quite interesting, and they were asking, if you come across a fuse board, which is a little bit ropey when you're doing other work in the house, what do you do? Do you report it or do you leave it? Uh, the answer to that is it depends. Um, so this particular house here, where I'm just working now, the fuse board here, I'm guessing that whoever did the bathroom also did this. So this is the board that's been fitted in, but um, you know, you've got an assortment of great big open holes there. It's just not the neatest install in the world, you know? Um, and it just gives you a feel for who, you know, who fitted it. You know, by the time I put a bit of electrical putty in there just to fill that hole back in, you know, all right, it's not the neatest job in the world, but essentially it's, you know, it's a dual RCD board. I've done the testing. It all trips. It works as it should do. You know, essentially it, it, it's, it's the fundamentals are there, but it's just not been fitted very neatly. I'll just put a note on the certificate saying not the, the fuse board, um, you know, 
isn't the neatest, you know, the fuse board hasn't been installed very neatly. And I'll just say that just to cover yourself, I'll just write, make a note on the certificate. And, and that's basically as far as you can go. I mean, if you get to one and it is, you know, properly piss poor, then I'll say something. If there's a fundamental risk, then I'll, then I'll point it out. But for this one, I'm not going to bother. You know, I'll just make a note of it on the certificate and I'll just let the agent know. But that's it, essentially. So, yeah, right, let me get in the van. Now, on to some serious business. If you're of the opinion that you'd like to subscribe to this rather pokey vlog, then you want to be clicking up here. But if you're of the opinion that you'd like to watch another video before making your mind up that you don't want to subscribe, then you want to click down here. Otherwise, that's about it from me, and I will see you on the next video, which will probably be on Monday. If not, it'll be whenever I've got time to upload it. So thank you very much for watching, and sayonara.